on uh, the agenda is item number uh, 21. Is there a motion to override uh, the mayor's veto? Is there a motion to override the mayor's veto? Are there any comments? Councilman Mixtum, you have the floor for comment. How do you know there would be comments? I, uh, sometimes I feel like I'm speaking into the void here and this last time it was true. So I'm gonna try to repeat everything I said. I wanted there to be an override of the veto on several points, not muster the seven votes. But I do think on certain points it is a shame. One of those is that we appropriated $400,000 from the capital improvement projects budget to go to the early learning centers. We did this because we knew there was a shortfall, that there was a need for more spaces. And we also knew that it was highly likely that the state could give that money back to us into the capital improvement budget. So we appropriated the money conditionally, I think on the suggestion of Councilman, Councilwoman Rossetti saying, we would only spend the money if we knew we were gonna get the money back from the state. So that was $400,000 for early learning centers that was essentially money given to us by the state. Now we're leaving that money on the table and I think that's a terrible idea. I understand some of it may come back to us from the CARES Act, but if we covered this with this money, which is free money from the state, probably, then we can use that CARES Act money for other needs that we have because we are a city with many needs. I will also say that we voted by the deputy clerk the mayor vetoed that. Some constituents feel that a deputy clerk is sort of like a cushy position. It's just giving jobs to our friends. But in fact, this is the one where the clerk's office is the interface between the people in their city. This is how they do a lot of business with the city. This is how information gets out about what. Clerk's office. And the addition of one employee would have been well worth it. I'm sorry to see you go. Lastly, Councilman Gale had proposed $6,000 to provide stipends for our poet laureate, our troubadour laureate, and a handful of other laureates. It's a, it's a pittance for a city that doesn't even have an arts department. And it was a reasonable thing. We agreed on it. It would have been $1,000 for each of those people. And the mayor came in and took 1000 away. So it's now 5000 which in the grand scheme of things doesn't matter, but this is the same mayor who doesn't want to litigate and wants to give a $250,000 rent break to a minor league baseball team. And yet now he's nickel and diming us on the arts for $1,000. I think it's petty. Councilman Mixton. I think we have uh, lost Councilman I do believe uh, he was done with his comments. So for the record, uh, this council body is not taking up any items on agenda item 21. Mr. Majority Leader, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. I, I would like to make a motion that we take action on item number 17 with the substitute adoption of the general fund ordinance 2020 2021. Second the motion. Motion has been made and properly second. Are there any discussions? Any discussion? Mr. Clark, please call the roll. Councilwoman Bermudez. Yes. Councilman Clark. Yes. Councilman Gale. Councilman Gale. Councilman LeBron. Yes. Gale says yes. Thank you. Councilman Mitchum. Councilman Mitchum. Councilwoman Rosado. Yes. Councilwoman Rosetti. Yes. Councilman Sanchez. Yes. Councilwoman Surgeon. Yes. Motion passed. Oh, Councilman. Uh, Mr. Clark, I'd like to get uh, Councilman Mixum's uh, vote on record, please. Yes, Councilman Mixum. Yes, sorry, I was having some internet problems. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Mr. Majority Leader, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Through you, I would like to make the motion that we 
take action on item number 18, which is the adoption of the tax ordinance for 2020 to 2021. Councilman LeBron, you're on mute. My apologies, I second the motion. Motion has been made and properly second. Are there any discussions? Any discussions on the item? Mr. Clark, please call the roll. Councilwoman Bermudez. Councilwoman Bermudez. Councilman Clark. Yes. Councilman Gale. Yes. Councilman LeBron. Yes. Councilman Mitchum. Yes. Councilwoman Rosado. Yes. Councilwoman Rossetti. Yes. Councilman Sanchez. Yes. Councilwoman Surgeon. Yes. Councilwoman Bermudez. Yes. Motion passed. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Mr. Majority Leader, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Through you, I would like to make the motion that we take action on item number 17, sorry, item number 19 with a substitute, which is an adoption of the CIP ordinance for 2020 to 2021. I second the motion. Motion has been made and properly second. Are there any discussions? Any discussions? Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilwoman Bermudez. Yes. Councilman Clark. Yes. Councilman Gale. Yes. Councilman LeBron. Yes. Councilman Mitchum. Yes. Councilwoman Rosado. Yes. Councilwoman Rossetti. Yes. Councilman Sanchez. Yes. Councilwoman Surgeon. Yes. Motion passed. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Mr. Majority Leader, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam, Madam President. Through you, I would like to make the motion that we place the following items on the consent calendar. Item number one, a company resolution by Mayor Bronin authorizing the City of Hartford's Department of Health and Human Services to accept $8,972.55 from Amplify, Inc. Item number 12, which is an ordinance revision updating the planning and zoning codes for clarification purposes. Item number 13 with a substitute, which is an ordinance amending chapter chapter two, section 102, regarding office of human relations of the municipal code of the city of Hartford. Item number 14, which is a resolution requesting the city of Hartford officially proclaim and recognize Juneteenth Freedom, Independence, Emancipation Day as a local holiday. Item number 15 which is a resolution requesting that the city of Hartford assert that racism is a public health crisis affecting Hartford and all of Connecticut. Item number 16, which is a resolution requesting that the city of Hartford to explore, develop, and ultimately operationalize a system that has appropriate responses to mental health calls. And item number 20, which is the CARES Act funding allocation. And second, second. Council President. Council Council President, Majority Leader. Councilwoman yeah. Rosetti, you have the floor. I'd like to recuse myself from a, a, a item 20 as um, I'm the executive director of a nonprofit and I will not participate in any of the meetings. Thank you, Councilwoman Rosetti. Uh, duly noted. Councilman Mitchum. Thank you, Madam President. I, I'll bring up what I brought up in the break, which is that I know. I believe that uh, item nine, which was not in the consent list, was referred from planning, economic development and housing with a favorable recommendation and could be on the consent list. So I don't know, perhaps Howard Rifkin can tell us whether I could simply add a friendly amendment to the motion, adding that one to the consent list. Through you, through you Madam President. Yes. Yes, if the maker of the motion uh, accepts it as a friendly amendment. Majority leader. Mr. Majority leader. Item number nine. Yes. That is correct. Um, also too, what about item number 10? I, I simply can't speak for it because I don't know if everyone consents. But I think we could figure that out easily enough.
Councilor Rosetti. Uh, again, not to uh, belabor this. If I recuse on one of the things in the consent, do I vote at the end for all of them? Except for that one. So do I just say I'm voting for all of them well, except, except for money? That okay. is correct. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, bear with us here for a second. Um, Council, Con Majority Leader Clark, could you read item number 10 for clarification purposes? Item number 10 is a communication from the Joint Committee of the Public Works, Parks, Recreation, and Environment, Environment Committee and the Operations Management Budget and Government Accountability, which has an accompanying resolution that will allow the city to enter into an agreement to replace the old fleet of golf cars and service vehicles with new units. Under the agreement, vendor EasyGo will provide service and maintenance for the golf for the new golf cars and service vehicles at no additional cost to the city. Thank you for that. Councilwoman Surgeon. Yes. Could we add item number 10 also to the consent calendar? It came out of the public work, uh, park recreation, and the OMB committee favorably. Um so we'd love to see if we can add it to the consent calendar also. Thank you, Councilwoman uh, Rosetti. Councilwoman Bermudez. Council President, I'd like to have item number 10 up for, just for action. Oh, okay. Councilman uh, Mixtum. I was, I was gonna say the same thing. I think I'll just limit my motion <laughs> amendments to number nine as the consent and then we can address number 10 on action. Mr. Majority Leader. Thank you, Madam President. Through you, I would like to amend the original uh, motion to place items on consent calendar to include item number nine, which is the resolution by the Court of Common Council calling on the governor and legislator of the legislature of the state of Connecticut to enact an executive order. Is there a second? A second a motion. Motion has been made and properly second. Any additional? Uh, Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilwoman Bermudez. Yes. Councilman Clark. Yes. Councilman Gale. Yep. Councilman LeBron. Yes. Councilman Mitchum. Yes. Councilwoman Rosado. Yes. Councilwoman Rossetti. Yes, except for agenda item 20 where I'm recusing myself. Okay, thank you. Councilman Sanchez. Yes. Councilwoman Surgeon. Yes. Motion passed. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Mr. Majority Leader, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Through you, I would like to make the motion that we receive the following items. Item number seven, planning, zoning, planning, economic development and housing committee, communication concerning ordinance revision, updating planning and zoning codes for clarification purposes. Item number eight, which is from the Operations Management Budget and Government Accountability Committee, Communication Discharging Ordinance Amending Chapter 2, Appointments of Department Head Requirements, Section 850 Residency, residency Requirements of the Municipal Code. Item number nine, a report from the Planning, Economic Development and Housing Committee with accompanying substitute resolution by the Court of Common Council of the City of Hartford calling on the governor and legislature of the state of Connecticut to enact by executive order or legislation provisions to protect the ability of all Harper residents to remain in their homes. And also item number 10, which is the communication from the Public Works, Parks, Recreation, and Environment Committee in the Operations Management Budget and Government Accountability Committee with accompanying resolution that will allow the city to enter into an agreement to replace the old fleet of golf cars and service vehicles with new units under the agreement, the vendor easy go. I second the motion. Council on next them. Just a point of clarification. Now we are, this is only receiving. We've already put nine on the consent calendar and 10 on action, but this is just receiving the reports that we're voting on. 
That is correct. And for clarification purposes, um, the residency requirement, um, even though it was received, it is uh, going to a committee of the whole. Is that correct? We haven't gotten to the uh, referral items yet. Okay. Okay. A motion has been made and properly second. Are there any other discussions? Mr. Clerk, oh, Councilwoman Bermudez. For, clar for further clarification, so item number 10 will be up for action after this. Yes, once the yes. motion is made, yes. Thank you. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilwoman Bermudez. Yes. Councilman Clark. Yes. Councilman Gale. Yes. Councilman LeBron. Yes. Councilman Mistum. Yes. Councilwoman Rosado. Yes. Councilwoman Rossetti. Yes. Councilman Sanchez. Yes. Councilwoman Surgeon. Yes. Motion pass. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Mr. Majority Leader, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Through you, I'd like to make a motion that we refer the following items to said committees. Item number two to the Public Works, Parks, Recreation, Environment Committee, which is a resolution by Mayor Bronin that will authorize the city to enter in an agreement with the Bushnell Park Foundation to help uh, to help achieve our mutual goal of restoring, preserving, and promoting the park. Item number three to the Health and Human Services Committee, uh, Mayor Bronin with the company resolution authorizing the city to accept a grant of three hundred. And ninety four thousand seven hundred eighteen dollars in funding for the Department of Health and Human Services from the National Foundation for the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention Inc. CDC Foundation. Item number four to the Planning, Economic Development and Housing Committee, which is Mayor Bronin with the company resolution concerning the year one annual action plan to HUD for approval and release of funds. Which requires a uh, public hearing for a date to be determined. Item number five uh, to go to also to the Planning, Economic Development, and Housing Committee, uh, Mayor Bronin with accompanying resolution affirming the appointments of Andres Jimenez Frank as a regular member, Kelvin Tom as a regular member, and Juliana Garcia Uribe as an alternate member to the Planning and Zoning Commission. Item number six to the Quality of Life and Public Safety Committee. Which is a mayor, which is a uh, resolution by Mayor Bronin, confirming the appointment of Ronald D. Holmes to the Civilian Police Review Board, and item number eleven to the Committee of the Whole, which is an ordinance amending Chapter Two, appointments of Department Head Requirements, Section Eight Five Zero, Residency Requirements of the Municipal Code. Second. In the motion. Motion has been made and properly second. Are there any discussions? Any discussions? Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilwoman Bermudez? Yes. Councilman Clark? Yes. Councilman Gale? Yes. Councilman LeBron? Yes. Councilman Mistum? Yes. Councilwoman Rosado? Yes. Councilwoman Rossetti? Yes. Councilman Sanchez? Yes. Councilwoman Surgeon? Yes. Motion passed. Mr. Majority Leader, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to make the motion that we place up for action item number 10, which is a resolution that will allow the city to enter into the agreement to place the old fleet of golf cars and service vehicles with new units under the agreement. The vendor EasyGo will provide service and maintenance for the new golf cars and service vehicles at no additional cost to the city. I second the motion. Motion has been made and properly second. Any discussions? Cons Councilman Mixtum? A uh, question for the proponents of the resolution. It says at no, the, at no additional cost. The no additional cost refers to the ongoing maintenance, but there is a cost to get the carts, right? For you, Council President. Councilwoman Bermudez? Through you, Council President. Yes, there is a cost, and the cost is $246,000 for the leasing agreement with EasyGo. And I just wanted to bring up some 
additional numbers. So the the actual the two golf courses that the city has, it is um, we have a golf superintendent that the city contracts with. That golf superintendent is called Gilmet Golf LLC. They're based out of Portland, Connecticut, and the city pays them annually. $533,560 to maintain the two golf courses. Some have asked before whether the city makes any money from the golf courses. And just to put things into perspective, in fiscal year 2018, the city paid, the city had an expense of over $2 million with the golf courses. In fiscal year 2019, an expense of 183. One million eight hundred eighty-three thousand eight hundred and forty. In fiscal year 2020, one million four hundred and ninety-five. And so some folks are wondering, well, what kind of revenues has that brought back to the city? In fiscal year 2018, we it was a negative for the city. Uh, we lost three hundred and sixty-four thousand dollars. Fiscal year 2019, the city lost three hundred and forty-eight thousand dollars, and so on and so forth. Another question that has been asked is, well, so how many people from Hartford that are Hartford residents utilize the golf courses? If we look at the membership of the golf courses, only 20% of those who are members of golf courses, of these two golf courses in Goodwin and Keeney Park are actually Hartford residents. So the question again is, why are we subsidizing this great amenity that is actually being not really being utilized by the majority of Hartford residents. And I asked that question because at a time when we're really looking at the city budget and trying to prioritize what is important to our community, one of the things that I'm especially hearing right now, given that it's summertime, is from folks who want to use the parks, folks who want to reserve the fields and cannot, cannot reserve the fields, people who run little leagues and want to do social distant practices with youth and are not able to, to reserve the fields right now. People who are very much interested in having access to the basketball hoops, but they're not open. And compared to other towns, and yes, we are in, in this pandemic, but compared to other towns where other towns have already set policies, here we are as a city prioritizing buying golf cars before we actually prioritize our youth, which is shameful. You know, we've sat down with members of the park commissions before, and one of the requests that they had early this year was, can we at least have a third party contractor to help us with the field reservation? Because every single year that we reserve the fields, it is problematic. And so that question's still up in the air. And so what is it that we're actually prioritizing as a city? Because from where I'm sitting and the people who I'm talking to are very frustrated with not having true access to the parks. Councilman Mixtum. Thank you, Council President. I would just add uh, from the committee meeting that, that sent this recommendation, one of the questions I was there, one of the questions I asked was, um, have the golf courses ever been profitable? And the answer was no. And when do we anticipate they're becoming profitable? And the answer was maybe, if I recall correctly, in five years. So we're throwing away a lot, a lot of money to create this lovely facility for folks, mostly folks from out of town, to come use. And now we're going to double down on that by getting new golf carts. And that seems crazy. Councilman Gale. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'd just like to make a couple of quick points for clarification purposes. First of all, uh, dollar amount that uh, Council Judith has mentioned of 292,000 is payable over five years, and the estimates. So it's not you know, we're paying that amount of money this year, and the estimates from uh, our DPW are that the golf courts golf. Uh, Parts are going to pay for themselves. So not only is this revenue neutral, but this is actually going to bring some money in. The second point is uh, this comes up at this point in time because the contract's running out. Uh, I don't think this represents any prioritizing of anything. Um, and uh, I would also further say that if Councilwoman Bermudez or anybody else 
has a better idea for how to open uh, our field sooner or how to get our kids out there, uh, I would welcome uh, the resolution. I would love to see uh, the proposal, uh, but that's not what's before us. This is before us. It just happens to come up because that contract's over uh, and it certainly seems to make sense. Thank you. Councilman Sanchez. Thank you, uh, through you, Madam President. Um, you know, I, I thank you, uh, Councilman Gale, for that explanation. And uh, and I understand where uh, Councilman uh, Mictum and uh, Councilwoman uh, Bermudez is coming from. But I, I must say that, uh, like any business, uh, you know, there's a, this is a sport. And the weather dictates if this, uh, you know, whether the year is going to be profitable or not. Uh, so in 2018, the issue there was that we had a very rainy summer. And when you have a rainy summer, you really can't go golfing. But at the, uh, you know, when you have a uh, golf course like Kinney Park, as I mentioned before, is the uh, number one renovated golf course in the country. It has been um, pro profitable uh, to the point where it sustained itself. But again, it dictates, uh, you know, the weather dictates whether you're going to survive for that year or not. And now, Kinney uh, Go Goody uh, Park, Goodwin Park uh, golf course. Now, the majority of the folks that I've met there and, and, and experienced over there is uh, majority minorities, okay? And we also have a uh, Latina uh, women's club that it has over 100 members and has been very uh, successful over there uh, through uh, Estela Morales. Uh, and this club or this league has been building up and building up, and she's also including children. Now, the comparison between the Kinney and Goody is that Goody is more of a uh, beginner's type of golf course. And it has been bringing a lot of, a huge amount of, uh, you know, city residents going there. And they've been very successful with that. The issue with this golf course is that when you don't have the equipment like any business and you don't update your equipment, all right, then you're not investing in that, in, in that business. And when you don't invest in that business, that's when you start losing revenue. So you have to replenish like any business you have to replenish the equipment and, and reinvest in that facility. Now, by reinvesting in that facility, which Goodwin needs a lot more investment, but it will become sustainable. Uh, Goodwin is one of the most attractive to me, golf course, especially when you have the, the, the children's uh, playscape, the basketball court, and obviously this coronavirus affected everyone, including these golf courses. I, I am in support of this. I think it will help the Goodwin Park and Kinney Park to be more successful. And I believe that in the very near future, it will start bringing in the revenue that will that we need or that it needs so that it will become sustainable and the city will not be spending that much more money, but will be bringing back money. And that's how business is. Um, I, I am in support of this. I'm calling so the question. You. I have my hand up, Madam President. Let me say something. Go ahead, Councilman Mixton. Thank you. Just just to clarify, because I heard Councilman Sanchez bring up the question of weather, which obviously is an issue, and certainly the golf courses have faced some bad weather. And I just remember that when we were looking at this in the budget a week and a half, two weeks ago, whenever that was, all of the years in the budget, which is going back uh, three or four years, the both golf courses operated at a loss. So at the committee hearing, I asked, did the golf courses ever operate at a profit? And the answer was no. So this is, if this is a weather problem, the problem is that we have weather at all and they're always losing money. And yes, it's true that if we don't get new equipment, we will lose more money, but we're already losing money. And I guess the question we have to ask is, how long do we want to just keep throwing money at these golf courses on the remote hope that we could someday just break even so that we could have golf courses, which are mostly for people from out of town. And that, I mean, I'm at $100,000 a year, give or take, that we lose on these golf courses. $100,000 will go a long way in this town. And I think there's a lot of folks who live here who would like to see that money used for them. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Right, Councilwoman Bimines? No. Councilman Clark? Yes, and then this is a motion to 
call the question. Motion to call the question. Motion to yeah. call the question. Okay. Do we need, I mean, I think I'm done. Do we need the motion to call the question? Because Other hands. Uh, yes, we do. Okay. Let me start the roll again for motion to call the question. Yes. Councilwoman Bermudez. No. Councilman Clark. Yes. Councilman Gale. Yes. Councilman LeBron. Yes. Councilman Mitchum. No. Councilman Rosado. Yes. Councilman Rosetti. Yes. Councilman Sanchez. Second and yes. Councilman Surgeon. Councilwoman yes. Surgeon. Yes. Motion to call the question pass. Thank you. Mr. Clark, now we're voting on the actual resolution. Yes. Please call the roll. Councilman Bermudez. No. Councilman Clark. Yes. Councilman Gale. Yes. Councilman LeBron. Yes. Councilman Mitchum. No. Councilwoman Rosado. Yes. Councilwoman Rosetti. Yes. Councilman Sanchez. Yes. Councilwoman Surgeon. Councilwoman yes. Surgeon. Yes. Motion passed. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Mr. Majority Leader, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, through you, if this if this a uh, an applicable motion, motion to reconsider item number four which is a resolution, company resolution concerning the year one actual action, a, annual, excuse me, action plan to HUD for approval and release of funds. I'll entertain a second. 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 Amendment number four. Second. A motion has been made and properly second. Um, Councilman Surgeon. What was the motion? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. To, re to reconsider item number four. And do what with it? We're reconsidering item number four to have Councilwoman Rosetti recuse herself from the vote. Okay, thank you. Councilman Gale? So, just so I'm clear, we're, we're, we're still going to move to send it back to PEDH? Yes. That'd be okay. 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 Right. Thank you. Thank you. A motion has been made properly second, so we will do a roll call where Councilwoman Rossetti will recuse herself. Uh, Mr. Clerk, could you please call the roll? Councilwoman Bermudez? Yes. Councilman Clark? Yes. Councilman Gale? Yes. Councilman LeBron? Yes. Councilman Mitchum? Yes. Councilwoman Rosado? Yes. Councilwoman Rossetti? I'm recusing myself from the vote. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Sanchez? Yes. Councilman Surgeon? Yes. Motion to reconsider pass. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Mr. Majority Leader, you have the floor. Um. According to our agenda, Madam President, there are no other items to be uh, discussed. That is that is wonderful news. I would like to, I would like to make a motion that we dismiss. <laughs> hey, wait, 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 wait. Uh, Councilman Gale? Don't we have to now refer item four to the PEDH committee? We do. But I thought we did a, didn't we do that already? No, we caught, we, we made a motion. Well, how are the queues? But reconsidering it brings it back onto the agenda. Yes. I'm sorry? Now we got to do something with it, I think. All right. We have to make a motion to send it back uh, to PDH. So we made a motion for clarity to reconsider so that a person can recuse herself. And then we have to make another motion to back the committee again. Put down the I think Councilman Gill is correct. Now we need to properly make a motion, even though we did discuss it, but we need to formally make a motion to refer it back to uh, PEDH. That is correct. But I, I defer 
uh, to Corporation Council through Madam President. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for you, Madam President, uh, I think Councilman Gale is correct. There should be a actual vote on a referral which would give Councilwoman Rossetti the opportunity to recuse herself from that referral. Ah, okay. From the referral. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Majority Leader, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Through you, I would like to make the motion that we refer item number four to the Planning, Economic Development, and Housing Committee, which is a uh, company resolution concerning the year one annual action plan to HUD for approval and release of funds with a HUD hearing date to be determined. And second the motion. Motion has been made and properly second. Are there any further discussions? Any further discussions? Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Councilwoman Bermudez. Yes. Councilman Clark. Yes. Councilman Gale. Yes. Councilman LeBron. Yes. Councilman Mitchum. Yes. Councilman Rossetti. Sorry, Councilwoman Rosado took down that. Yes. Councilwoman Rossetti. I recuse myself and Thank will you. not take part in any deliberation. Thank you. Councilman Sanchez. Yes. Councilwoman Surgeon. Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. I want to again apologize for the technical difficulties that we had this evening. Um, with no further business to conduct, I am calling this meeting adjourned. <laughs>